Hi everyone, welcome along. Autumn is on the way and we all probably want to stay indoors a little bit more and curl up with a good book, so I thought what a perfect subject to paint. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right then, so we're going to begin with painting a little stack of books. Now I think, um, uh, I know that whenever I sort of start to paint something like this, I'm like, how do I begin this? Like painting stacks of books seems a bit tricky. Well, what I would recommend is begin with two parallel lines like this. And this can be our first book. And from there, it's just kind of a bit easier to draw in ones on an angle. By the way, if this looks a bit strange and you're like, I don't see how this is a pile of books, well, all will come clear soon. Um, so that is going to be one as well. And then we'll have a taller one. And I'm going to put in a brush pot here because I want to do a nice little scene to get us inspired to get painting this autumn or this fall. So we're going to paint, we're going to paint our paintings. Okay, so there's a, a pen pot there and then we'll have a lovely mug of something nice and warming up here. So that nice oval at the top of that mug and do a handle there. And we'll put some brushes in. Don't forget when you're putting things in a, a pot like this, imagine them going all the way down to the bottom, even if you're not gonna see the bottom, because I promise you it will change how you, how you draw them in the pot. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a few sort of sheets of watercolour paper just coming out the base. So we're going to have, I think this is going to be like a journal sketchbook and maybe this is like a reference book. But that looks kind of fun to me as a base. So. Follow that through, rewind a few times if you want to just really get the drawing nailed. Um, but once you've drawn that in, give it a light rub out of pencil. Because I'm filming, I'll keep mine um, this strong. I won't, I won't rub it out so you can still see it nice and clearly. And we can get painting. So the first thing we're gonna do is create the sort of the paper color for all the pages and the little sheets of paper. I've got a mixture of yellow ochre and like the tiniest bit of shadow, Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna. And then I've added lots of water and with my size zero brush here, you can see that if I just paint that in, it's, it's very faint, but it's just gonna help create this sort of watercolour paper colour. So that paper's going to be like that and then for the pages of the books I'm going to use my rigger brush and we can all bleed together these lines but we're going to get a nice sort of sense of the pages of the book. Sometimes a rigor brush is, is wonderful for control. Sometimes uh, I find if the area I'm painting is too small a space, then I just want to go back to my size four tenths brush. But I feel like that's just about all right. So yeah, if I got my four tenths brush and did 
Yeah, see that's quite good, isn't it? And then you can just sort of do that. And then I think also what might be quite nice, getting a little bit of Payne's Grey and just sort of dropping it in. What I quite like is during these YouTube tutorials, I'm often making my own discoveries of what what's good and what's not so good. I mean, I do prepare, but I don't always paint the thing like 100% of the way through before I get on with you guys. So you will notice every now and then I'm like, oh, that's cool, that works. Okay. Yeah, pleased with that. So I'm just gonna fill in these pages and then we'll get on to the next stage. And now we can just have some fun really. Um, so I'm gonna mix up some colors for the books. Got Alizar and Crimson, that's a rather nice sort of distinguished book color. And I am going to begin by using my size zero brush Paint in this first section up here. Sort of purposefully um, allowing the colour to sort of uh, water down as it comes outwards. Uh, I love colouring things in a little bit sort of loosely. I think it gives the book a lot more character it's just that colour is a little uneven in things. Um, then I'm going to go for green gold up here. So you can see, just purposefully leaving a few tiny hints of that unpainted white. And then making sure we paint in a nice layer underneath. And the hope is that once that's been painted, this will be a little bit drier and I can now come in and paint the spine of this book. And I think what I want to do is I want to paint it. I've got my four tenths brush now. I want to paint it with uh, little sections Again, notice how I'm just allowing tiny bits of unpainted space. And I've also got to think about the roundness of these little curves that I'm leaving in, because of course they're going to need to flatten out. As we get across the book. Now I know a book isn't like a, a shiny reflective surface, but these little sort of glimmers of unpainted space in the painted sections just, it just gives it character, I think. This painting is very much, you know, like a, a little whimsical illustration. And I think you need to think how your painting style might reflect the subject matter that you're painting. Okay, so I think I'm going to come from the other side now and just at least get that one in. Okay, so I'm just going to fill in all these sections across. 
So I just used Payne's Grey to do that and um, just made my edge just a tiny bit more wobbly and soft to make it look like a moleskin kind of diary. Now, um, I've got my mug of tea over here and um, I don't know if you can really see over there, but I have a, an H on my mug and it's a lovely decorative mug actually. Um, so I'm going to draw in a mug with my initials on it. So of course, whatever you want to paint on it. Um, but I'm using cobalt blue deep here. My mug has a bit of a curve, so I'm just gonna make sure that the shape of my letter reflects that. So I'm using my four tenths brush and I'm painting cobalt blue deep And that looks rather nice. And whilst that dries, I'm going to paint in this pen pot. Now I think actually I would like to do it see-through. Um, I just think that'd be a rather fun skill. So I've got some Payne's Grey mixed in with my sort of pale paper colour from earlier. And I'm going to use my size zero brush and angle it quite low to the page. To start off with and you get that nice sort of broad line. And then I've just cleaned off my brush. Now, of course, we have got um, a few things that we know are behind this pen pot. So I've got to take a little bit of my green and just sort of place in a bit of that there. And a tiny bit of the slightly stronger Payne's Grey, but only a little bit. And place that in like that. I'm going to have pencils and brushes in the pot but for now it basically it's just a little bit of a waiting game isn't it? What else can we paint in whilst we're waiting for everything to dry? Well my mug of tea can go in so a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of burnt sienna and made me a very nice cup of tea for my painting session. So thank you, Ant. And then really, it's just a case of waiting for everything to dry before we start doing all our details. Right, time for my favorite stuff, the detail. So four tenths brush, and I've got a more concentrated Alizar and Crimson and you'll see that I've done a bit of detail on the top of the book and now I'm doing some extra lines and I will also just do a little sort of imprint on the book there and I'll just show you how I did that. Oh, I need to get Clean your brush off better, Harriet. There we go. Get some uh, sap green, I think. This is what Kitchen Roll is brilliant for, is especially with the smaller brushes, you really don't notice that you've got other colours lurking in those bristles until you place it on your page too soon. So it's always good to test first. But I'm going to take some Alizar and no, I take some sap green when we're talking about. And I'm going to use the very fine lines of this brush. Whoops. And create some nice book detail. So we've got a little square there. And I think maybe just a few dashes. A little twiddle at the end. It's a fun one just to be able to create lots of little details on the edges of these books. And I think I'll just do There we go. 
go. That looks really fun. And then my sort of sketchbook journaly thing doesn't really need much, and that's why I was able to paint it a, a dark colour. Um, but I will just sort of create just a little bit of darkness. on there, but not too much. Okay, the next thing, I'm really excited to put some nice little details onto my mug. So whatever you fancy, really. I mean, my mug's already got these little sort of leafy details on it, so it makes sense just to stay true to that. Now of course this mug is white at the moment and we could have placed in a bit of sort of faint almost like shading on it at first and we do definitely sort of run the risk now of possibly uh, smudging the detail we've put on it but I'm not too worried. Sometimes it's just good to try try different things out isn't it and see what happens but we'll probably place just a little bit of shadow on it at some point and then finally my paint brushes and my pencils so of course I've got my pencil got my paint brushes Let's see, so a bit of red. We'll turn this one into a pencil. And then underneath the cup, I'm just gonna soften it a bit. Even though there's not like, um, it's not a vase of water, so we're not sort of distorting it completely, but We'll let that dry before we put any of the black in. And then for my paint brushes, I think. Using some of this faint shadow. bit of Mars Black. And then some yellow ochre. for the bristles on the top. Now, what am I gonna be painting on my, on my pages? Well, I thought it had to be autumn leaves, didn't it, really? So if I just imagine I've got an autumn leaf So just using the nice autumnal colours in my palette. So what's nice about this painting is you can decide to personalise quite a lot of elements of it. I 
by choosing like what you're going to have on the mug, what you're going to have in your pen pot, what you're going to be painting. And then the last things I can do is a few tiny little bit of scribble up my pro art brushes, a little line, a little bit of lead in the pencil, and maybe if you're feeling brave, and maybe just a, a line or two. brushes there and then our mug paint in a line of that shadow and then just leave it there And that's rather lovely. So I, I'm always just, I love painting miniatures and I keep finding things that I could keep adding. But also I think a lot of the charm comes from sort of giving it that slight little imperfection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this dry and rub out the pencil and then add a tiny bit of shadow. Rubbing out the pencil has done a really nice job of just sort of lifting the piece off the page <laughs> and now I'm going to add shadow to it so I'm going to heavy it back down um, but don't worry it'll be be nice and subtle so Payne's grey nice and dilute I'm just going to place in a little bit on top of the pages there you can also just do a little line like that See, some of the shadow we're not even really going to see. But some we will. And there we go, a lovely little autumnal scene of your very own workspace when you're not necessarily sure what to paint next. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And if you're sharing your work on social media then tag us at De Winton Paper Co on Instagram. And if you never want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye.